Good afternoon. Uh, some slides, I'll just see if I can... Uh, oh yeah, they're there, good. Hey, so um, I'm Stuart Macbeth, I'm the CEO of the derivatives business at DDCC. Um, if you don't know DDCC, it is a, a non-profit organisation, operates on a cost recovery uh, model. It is governed by its users and acts as a true market utility in the, in the financial markets. Um, something that's less well known is actually its presence in the derivative business is actually mostly a European presence. Certainly the uh, data is resident in, in Europe predominantly um, and those businesses are, are operated from here uh, in, very strongly, although we do try and operate across, across markets globally. Uh, what I really wanted to use this time to do is try and motivate that um, the, the trade repository regime should be aligned with the transaction reporting regime in, in MIFID. Um, I think there's, there's very clear parallels between the two and it's, there's, there's a very strong need for a, a minimal divergence between those. So I think as you, as you know there, there is a changing landscape with respect to OTC derivatives. Uh, clearly the clearing and, and execution regimes are changing uh, but also the reporting regime and EMEA specifically introduces in Europe uh, the requirement to report to trade repositories. Uh, in parallel the, the MIFIR uh, adaptations extend the reporting that currently exists in derivatives to cover, to cover more derivatives and more instruments. If you, if you looked at the actual nature of the detailed reporting both envisaged under EMEA and, and under MIFIR, um, you'll see a very kind of close overlap in terms of what is, what is actually required. At, at every level, product, the actual nature of events, uh, who actually reports, there is a slight difference in terms of whether duplication is allowed or not. And actually, the, the, um, the transaction reporting regime encourages both parties, whereas the, uh, the trade repository regime encourages um, <coughs> reporting without duplication. Um, I guess the irony is actually people probably want to report both parties in many cases uh, simply to fulfil their obligations even to a trade repository. So in practice we're not seeing much differentiation even, even within that, that point. Uh, the actual definition is, is with ESMA um, and you know, is going to manage both regimes. The actual frequency of reporting is, is identical. It's, uh, it's as soon as possible but uh, no later than the end of the next day in, in effect for, for both regimes. Slight difference again in terms of where people are trying to get data to. One is to a repository, the other is to a regulator. In practice that is little different and even today we have uh, situations where we're, we're sending data to regulators uh, daily or weekly. Um, specifically, you know, I'm talking to the SEC and the CFTC about the regime in the US and they're expecting to receive all our data every day. So again, uh, that practical difference is, is actually minimised. The purpose that they were established for is, is probably different, although you know, what we've seen over, over time with the um, groups like there's an OTC Derivatives Regulators Forum that has involved both uh, central banks and uh, prudential regulators and I said both, and um, and market regulators increasingly, and we've seen you know more cohesion between the the purposes of a repository, and people have begun to recognise it has a systemic risk purpose, it has a supervisory purpose in terms of over the financial institutions, but also has a role in 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 market um, surveillance and 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 market oversight. So in terms of you know, where we see some of the key messages from our users, and again as this user-governed organisations, they, they, they clearly want to see user choice in how they report. Um, they're very concerned about you know, bundling anywhere in the derivative landscape. Uh, between any any layer, uh, they certainly feel they need that control to report accurately and completely. Uh, they are very keen on being able to reconcile the data that has been submitted on their behalves and make sure that that, that process is easily managed. Uh, they do want to use single interfaces, they do want to use market standard uh, data um, and consistent identifiers on a global basis. Many, many organisations are transacting internationally in these markets. 
and the, the key to a lot of this also though is actually the, the symmetry to access rules and it's something we're experiencing in the trade repository space as to how uh, regulators receive and can assuredly receive the, the data that they're entitled to and they don't overreach those boundaries. But um, you know, that, that is not a distinct issue in the, in the transaction reporting space from, from that in the, in the trade repository space. So uh, to conclude, as a trade repository provider, I think we will be very closely involved in the transaction reporting solution uh, for, for, for Mythia. Um, the reporting overlap is significant. The actual, actually day to day in our current experience, we are finding that markets regulators are asking for position information as much as they ask for transaction information when they are trying to look at market surveillance uh, issues. Uh, so the idea of simply just reporting transactions is potentially insufficient for, for their needs. If you look internationally, and I, I guess not to use a, a US example, maybe you know, even look to Japan, they. Um, yeah, actually have quite a combined regime. They have actually have a transaction reporting regime, but they've, they're looking to supersede that with trade repository uh, reporting and see that as a, as a reason to exempt direct reporting in, from the transaction, re, um, the transaction reporting regime. So in the US, obviously, it's combined in the swap data repository framework. The, the market regulation is, is combined in the, in the trade repository regime. And the last thing to say is, you know, the market isn't just in Europe. So people do trade offshore. They will trade European underlyings, uh, you know, with out, outside the boundaries of Europe. And that's something else that trade repositories can can help with um, if this this framework is harmonised. That was it from me.